guys, welcome to the Mac Foundation. Today is our first responder day. We appreciate everybody coming and checking everything out, checking out all the departments. Today, we're gonna do a demonstration uh, between a sprinkled and non-sprinkled building. Uh, my name is Phil Toper with Maryville Fire Department. I've been fire marshal for 18 years. And so I wanna stress to you guys the importance of proper fire safety, uh, how smoke alarms and sprinkler systems save lives and uh, what to do in a fire event. And this is my friend here from Ryan Fire Protection, who's gonna talk to you about the benefits of sprinkler systems and how they operate, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna to see today is a unprotected uh, space, okay? So imagine a living room within your house. Uh, I'm gonna set that on fire. We're gonna watch it grow, okay? What we're gonna see is we're gonna see the fire grow unchecked. It's gonna reach up to the ceiling level. The fire is gonna start rolling out the front of the building, okay? The front of the structure as all the contents in the room start on fire, okay? You guys are gonna feel some radiant heat uh, to see that even though you're this far away, this is how hot uh, the fire gets. So I'm gonna go start this on fire real quick and I'll come back and talk to you guys a little bit more. Good afternoon, guys. I'm Stephen Malone with Ryan Fire Protection. I've been in the industry going on seven years now. As he gets the fire started, I just figured I'd give you guys some information. Um, hopefully, once he gets it started in a few seconds, we'll start hearing the alarms. But uh, at, as you can see, the fire hasn't gotten tremendously big, and we can already we can already hear that early detection, that smoke alarm going off. That smoke alarm's going off in 15 to 20 seconds. You then, in an unsprinkler building, have about two to three minutes to get out of the building before the flames get lethal. Right, so as he said, in a modern uh, fire building that we have today, you only have about two minutes to get out of the structure. So what's the first thing we want to do when there's a fire in the home? We want to get low and go, right? We want to get low to the ground for a couple reasons. Uh, one, because that's where the lowest temperatures are going to be in a room. That's where the best visibility is going to be, and that's where the oxygen is going to be. So we want to get down to the ground, and we want to crawl as fast as we can to the closest exit that's safe for us. Okay? And once we get out, we want to go to where? Our meeting spot, right? So at a mailbox, at a neighbor's house, somewhere where your family decides that we want to meet up so that we know everybody's safe. We're going to leave all our toys behind. We're going to leave anything valuable behind we just want to get out and make sure we're safe so we can see the fire is rapidly spreading within this room here the couches are well enveloped uh, and the fire is starting to burn upwards we see a lot of black smoke right that black smoke is toxic to us right that's what kills us in a fire and so that's why it's so important to have working smoke alarms to get out of the house as fast as possible okay? So as the fire continues to grow, it's going to rapidly develop uh, into a lot of smoke, and then all of a sudden you're going to see fire rolling out the front of the building. So at three to five minutes, the temperature in this room is reaching around 1,500 degrees. This is approaching what we call flashover. At flashover, nobody can survive the fire. It's too hot and it's complete loss. Oh my gosh. No. So let's... You can see the smoke is intensifying. It's pushing out with greater velocity. And that's an indication that we're, we're rapidly approaching uh, to a point of flashover. As the fire grows, we've got heat pushing down from the fire on the ceiling there, and it's igniting everything. So right now, the fire department's responding. If you've been paying attention to how quickly things are happening, as the fire builds, the guys are at the department, they're getting the call, they're getting there to secure, they're getting on the road. We're getting response time being about five to ten minutes. You've seen this fire basically destroy this room within that time frame. 
Um, and with the hoses, they're connecting, the hydrants are connecting to the trucks. Mm -hmm. They're moving about 150 gallons per minute through this hose to suppress this fire. So when there's a fire event, not only are your contents being damaged by smoke, by heat, by fire, and by water, uh, in comparison to a sprinkler system, which you're going to see, the damage is a lot less severe and a lot less significant. Okay? Sprinklers and smoke alarms do say a lot. The purpose of the sprinkler is to obviously keep the fire in check or to extinguish the fire in its early stages before it gets to the point that you guys see. Thank you, guys. Alright, I'm going to go light. Our local hero here. Hey, Jason. Hey, Jason. What he's going to start a fire in is protected currently with what we call a residential sprinkler, an automatic residential sprinkler. The water for the sprinkler is actually being supplied from the water already coming into your house, the water feeding your sinks. The water's feeling your toilets, the one's feeding your hoses outside. So as that fire starts and builds, you'll see the you'll see the growth, you'll start hearing the alarms once they start going off. Within a few seconds like we talked about, so you're hearing the alarms. That's giving you the indication to get out, to get to your safe space, your predetermined safe space. And so in a new construction setting, sprinkler systems are not very expensive. It's only about 1 to 1.5 percent of the total cost of the building. So a $300,000 home is only going to cost about 5000 to sprinkler. So as I said, in the unprotected room, when you saw that big burst of flame and it really all go up, it was about 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The sprinkler in this room is sensitive to 150. So at a tenth of the temperature, the sprinkler is starting to do its job. And it starts spraying the whole room with water. You see the water hitting the walls, it's hitting the floor, and it's getting water. This is one sprinkler. You saw how the fire destroyed this room in minutes. This is one sprinkler pushing 20, 15 to 20 gallons a minute of water, a tenth of what the water the fire department's using, and that's suppressing the fire, giving you more of a chance to get out safely and protecting your home. And with sprinkler systems, they do not operate as you see in the movies where all of them go off at the same time. Okay, that's only in the movies. So sprinkler heads activate one by one, they're heat sensitive, and so the heat is required to activate the sprinkler head so that it starts to flow water. So this is our demonstration. We appreciate you guys paying attention. Uh, we're gonna shut the water off here in a minute and you guys can go up and take a look and compare the two uh, for yourselves. Thank you guys for listening and I appreciate it.